This video is sponsored by Skillshare. The reason that I'm making this video is because I get this question a lot. Should I spring for a body that has built-in image stabilization or should I get the cheaper body and just get an inexpensive gimbal? Or better yet, should I just go out and get the brand new Sony ZV-E10 that has electronic image stabilization? Yes, they are now in stock almost everywhere and I got my hands on one. So that is the question that I wanna answer in this video and Hopefully it helps you figure out which camera body you should get in terms of stabilization. And this is something that I've been curious about myself and this is the first time I've ever handled the ZV-E10, so let's get started. For this test, I'm using three different cameras but the same exact lens, the Sigma 18 to 50 mm f2.8. It's a solid performing all around fast zoom that is light and compact and one of my favorites and it has no stabilization built in. As for the cameras, the first one is the top of the line APS-C, the Sony a6600. This camera has in-body image stabilization or IBIS, so it is quite a bit more expensive than the other two cameras in this comparison. It is a mechanical version of stabilization because as you can see here the sensor moves up and down and left and right to compensate for camera shake. Up next is the newest Sony ZV-E10 which is a highly popular content creator geared camera that doesn't have a viewfinder which is why I don't like it very much. This little camera does not have in-body image stabilization but instead has EIS which is electronic image stabilization. What this means is that instead of the sensor moving to compensate for camera shake there are gyros in this camera body recording data of the movements and after you import your video file into a free Sony editing program you can electronically correct for camera shake by cropping into your shot and using the gyro data points to fix it. This is by far the most tedious way to get smooth footage but we'll see how effective it is. Last up is the old budget Sony a6100, a camera with absolutely no electronic or mechanical stabilization built into it. So to compete I am going to be strapping it into this Feutech Scorp Mini, a $200 gimbal that I just reviewed last week. This is the largest setup out of the three, but it should make for a pretty good performance because the gimbal is designed for this. So here are the three camera setups. Now obviously two of them are significantly smaller than this gimbal setup, but all three are relatively packable. You can easily disassemble this and put it in a pretty compact bag to go with you if you're planning on taking your camera traveling. Now before I get into the side-by-side -side video comparison of the performance of these three stabilization systems, Let's talk about today's video sponsor, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for those who love learning and want to explore their creativity. It's a place to invest in yourself and your personal growth. For me, it's the perfect place to start if I'm trying to learn a new specific skill or I'm trying to master a skill. Most of the time that is something photography or videography related, but they offer classes in illustration, graphic design, freelancing, leadership, marketing, even web development, among many others. Most recently, I've been taking a class in color grading called, oddly enough, color grading, creating a cinematic look, which is taught by Fred Trevino, who is a colorist by trade. I'll be honest, I started this class because I know about 3% of what there is to know about color grading, but I have been paying attention to it in movies and shows and it's starting to pique my interest. Skillshare is also completely ad-free which is awesome and they have new premium classes that are launched each week so there is always something new to discover and learn. And because they are sponsoring this video, the first 1,000 of you to go down into the description below and click on the link will get a free one month trial of Skillshare. So definitely check out the link down in the description. Special thank you goes out to Skillshare for being a continued supporter of this channel. Now let's get back to the stabilization comparison. So I have five different video clips for you guys, all done with the same lens, but at different focal lengths for each individual test. First one here is IBIS versus EIS, or electronic image stabilization. So the first thing to notice here is that the focal lengths do look different. Both of these videos were shot at 24 millimeters, if I remember correctly, but the ZV-E10 is cropping in quite a bit to stabilize the video. But the results are massively better with electronic stabilization versus IBIS it's not even a question. I think that people overestimate the value and importance of in-body image stabilization with cameras such as the a6600, at least with Sony camera bodies, because I'll be honest with you guys, I think that Sony IBIS is 
quite frankly, pretty terrible. A lot of other camera manufacturers do a much better job of IBIS integration. So I wouldn't recommend just going out and spending a ton of money on a camera that has IBIS if it's a Sony thinking that you're gonna go out and take stable video because that just simply is not the case. Here is EIS versus the gimbal setup and this is interesting. You get the full resolution with the gimbal setup, the correct focal length because you aren't cropping in and the shot does look more stable with the gimbal, it's better. But I am genuinely impressed that the ZV-E10 is doing what it is doing handheld. Next up, let's look at vlogging between IBIS and EIS. Again, I think the IBIS is not great. It is better than completely unstabilized footage, but it's not doing much here. The EIS is impressively good. Same test with the gimbal and EIS now. So the gimbal is giving us a true wide 18 millimeter focal length and more stability. This is more like a 23 millimeter or so on the ZV-E10 because of the cropped stabilization. Okay, a standing in place pan shot between IBIS and EIS. Here IBIS is doing quite well, I think, but it is still not quite as steady as the shot from the Sony ZV-E10. Same shot with the gimbal versus EIS and the results are very similar, both doing well. This next shot is just me keeping the camera steady at 50 millimeters for a portrait, and the IBIS is great for this stuff. When you aren't walking or moving the camera much, it's perfectly fine. The EIS is better, albeit more like a 60 millimeter focal length with the crop. Now, when you compare the gimbal to EIS, you'll see that the gimbal is solid. It looks almost like a tripoded shot, whereas the Sony ZV-E10 does have a little bit of movement. It's very smooth movement though. Last up, here I am walking quickly behind my son, IBIS versus EIS. I know the IBIS is bad, but man is the EIS good. I am impressed. Same shot with the gimbal, and by comparison, the EIS looks a little bit shaky. All right, so the conclusion of this test is quite easy and straightforward. Do not count on in-body image stabilization if you are shooting video, honestly. As good as it is for static shots, if you're not moving around, or maybe a little bit of a pan or a tilt, anything other than that, it's going to struggle and it's really not going to perform all that well. And the same thing applies to whether or not you have in-body image stabilization or a lens that is stabilized. Whether it has OSS, which is Sony's optical steady shot, or Tamron's VC, which is vibration compensation or vibration control, results between IBIS and OSS are basically the same. I did a video about this a couple of years ago. Both of them are fine for static work or just very slight controlled movement, but they are not good for walking around, running around, vlogging, or any real action movements. So at least in this video, the A6600 with its IBIS comes in third place. As for the other two options, I am genuinely impressed with the electronic stabilization from the ZV-E10. It's really very well done. Now, is it a complete replacement for a gimbal? I would say in many situations, yes. I mean, you can take this camera with you and travel with just this camera and an unstabilized lens and come home, pop it into your editing program, stabilize all of your clips, and get away with no stabilization when you're running around. And it will result in very smooth video footage. Obviously, not at full resolution, you'll have to crop in, and you will have to go in and tediously stabilize every single clip, one clip at a time. But it's possible, and I think that's why this camera has been so popular lately. As for the gimbal, yes, it is the biggest setup here. Uh, but it is also the one that I think resulted with the best video quality and the best video footage because you're using the full sensor of your camera, all 4K resolution, or in Sony's case, 6K down sample to 4K. Is it a little bit more challenging to use because you have to power on a camera and a gimbal and you have to really practice a little bit with the gimbal movements? Yes, but the results really do speak for themselves. This is a great, cheap, inexpensive setup cheap camera body, cheap gimbal, and um, I think it performs quite amazingly. For a lot of people with Sony APS-C cameras that don't have IBIS, which is a majority of people, the price premium of upgrading from an A6100 to an A6600 just does not make any sense. It's double the price in many situations, and you don't really get much in terms of stability. A $200 gimbal such as this one makes a whole lot more sense because it's stable, and it's a cool bit of gear anyway to carry around and work with.
So in the end, my choice is stick with a gimbal, get something inexpensive like this Feutech or a Zion Crane M2, M2S, M3, something like that, small, compact, maneuverable, and you'll be very happy. But I don't think that's where Sony is headed. In fact, if nothing else, I think we're gonna be seeing more of this Sony ZV-E10 and more electronic image stabilization. If I were to guess, I would say that most likely in the very near future, Sony is going to be putting this electronic image stabilization EIS into all of their future APS-C models. Um, and I think that's probably why they didn't add any stabilization to the recent ultra-wide lens releases that they came out with a month and a half ago because they're ultimately going to transition from IBIS over to EIS. And so you don't really need stabilized lenses for that. Everything will be housed in compact camera bodies such as this. And especially after they update the resolution on these cameras, if they ever go up to something like a 6K or an 8K readout, it will allow for um, the electronic stabilization to move around on the sensor and you really won't lose all that much in terms of pixels and resolution. Um, so I think that's where it's headed, but that's just a guess who knows what will happen in reality. Anyway, that is going to be it for this video and this comparison review. I hope you guys enjoyed it and you learned something from it. Let me know down in the comments what your thoughts are as far as the results of this. Were you surprised by it? Is it what you expected? Are you planning on upgrading to the Sony ZV-E10 or are you buying a gimbal? I'm always curious to read your guys' responses down below. Thank you so much for all of your comments, all of your likes and your support. Stay tuned for more. Have a nice day. Bye-bye.